going to give you a demonstration on this new kind of insulation, the 11 second pitches. It's a quarter of an inch thick and equal to 12 inches of solid concrete. Um, explain how it all works in a moment, but right now we're going to take note of this. <clears throat> Essentially you have here two identical RVs. Um, this side here is the roofs on each. It's one inch of polyisylene insulation. It's equal to an R6. You could do an R50, but we'd just be here much longer. And then this is the roofs of the RVs where the sun is going to be shining down on. So um, the time we're starting the presentation is 3.27 p.m. Right now the temperature in this cell over here on the I'll call it my, as we face them, the right from facing it is 75.7 um, and over there is 77.1. Notice that this room is a little bit cooler than this room. I'm going to explain why that is in a minute. And uh, this one up here is a little warmer than this room and I'm going to explain why that is in a moment. So. Right now it's nighttime, but to coin a beetle phrase, here comes the sun. So now we have the sun coming up, beating down on the roofs. Um, these are actually two heat lamps from Home De halogen lights from Home Depot is what they are, is halogen. And technically they're supposed to be identical, but this one is a little bit hotter than that one. But we're going to put it on my side to be fair. So let's say that we have our generator set to come on. At 84 degrees. So at 84 degrees the generators are going to start and the air conditioners are going to start running. So while this is doing what it's doing, I'm going to explain to you how this works. So any, any, any question you have after I leave, if you go, well gee, I wonder about if you can remember what I'm going to tell you right now, it'll help answer any question about how the product works later. So think of our product as ice. That's what it is. It's ice. So let's give you a little lecture about ice. If I took a a nice chest on the hottest day of the year, set it out in the, the center of the parking lot and I put a six pack of whatever you like inside and I close the lid and I didn't do anything else, the temperature in the ice box would just start rising. However, if I took a block of ice, like a 20 pound block of ice and set it inside the ice chest and closed the lid, it would start cooling down the drink and the ice block would start to melt. Now, as it was starting to melt, if I went, hey, I wonder what the temperature is. So if I took one of these thermal sensor guns and I went and pointed it at the block of ice and pulled the trigger, it would be at least 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe less if maybe the ice house where it came from was storing everything at 25 degrees, it would be then actually 7 degrees below freezing, but it will be at least 32 degrees. So then you go away and you come back five hours later. Well, before I get into that, if you think of this stuff that we have as ice, there's if you see the thickness of these is exactly the same, but there's like a quarter inch gap here that you don't see on this one because we have a piece of, if you will, our ice on this side. So that's why this room was cooler to begin with than this one. It also has a radiant reflective shield on it which reflects any heat from above back up again and that's why this one was slightly warmer in the beginning than that one over there. So if we come back five hours later, we open the ice chest, we're going to find that we have a a blob of ice about the size of a softball bobbing around in some water along with your drinks that you're keeping cold. If I take the heat gun, the thermal sensor, and I point it at that piece of ice, the softball ice, it's going to read 32 degrees because it's still ice. What's interesting though is if I were to point it at the water and pull the trigger, it's also going to be 32 degrees. This is a fundamental, fundamental law of physics. And it says that the temperature of the water cannot rise even one degree until all of the ice has melted. So that's how this works. It's ice. The difference between our ice and God's ice, God said that water freezes and melts at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. We can't change that. But the ice that we have, we can set the melting point. <clears throat> the melting point for our ice is set at approximately 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a more precise number in centigrade, but <clears throat> For our purposes, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'll cover why 80 degrees a little later on in the presentation. So now that we know that it's set for 80 degrees, that's the temperature that it will freeze and melt at. So as we take a look and see what we're doing here now, we've been on for about uh, four or five minutes, 
we're already at 273 degrees here, I mean 173 degrees here, 165 degrees here. These sensors top out at 275 degrees. It'll just say high after that. That doesn't mean that it's only 275 degrees, but it's at least 275 degrees. But as you can see, the temperature in this side over here has um, barely moved, and the temperature over here has gone up approximately um, 6 degrees already. We were at 77.1, and now we're at 83.6. So uh, this one, weirdly enough, seems to have uh, it's gone from 75.7 to 75.9. It's only got up two tenths of a degree in the time this one's gone up six degrees. Um, we could let this sit here for over an hour, and even in an hour, it's not going to hit the 84 degrees that we discussed here in this presentation. So, to explain a little more about the product, uh, first off, it's made in North Carolina. It's currently being used by all cell towers throughout the United States. Uh, material is used in the rooms to maintain the temperature of the batteries. Batteries can't also get too cold, and this material actually takes care of that as well. Because just like ice, this can be either an insulator, a cooler, or a heater. Think, think of Eskimos living in, in igloos. Well, igloos are blocks of ice, and yet it's warm inside for the Eskimos. Same idea here. So, um, with that in mind, we'll continue on with some of the statistics about the product. It has a life expectancy of about 85 years. It weighs a half a pound per square foot. It has, um, it is plant-based. It's technically edible. We don't recommend you eat it, but if you, if someone, a dog or a kid or somebody accidentally ate it, nothing's going to happen. Um, and it is currently being used in the uh, RV industry by a company called Forest River, the Galleria division, which is their uh, Class B, it's their sprint, Sprinter van on a Mercedes chassis. Um, they're using it because it makes a dramatic difference in how it works. So, um, while this is cooking, we could go in and demonstrate some of our other products, but we're going to stick on this one right now for purposes of this training video. But as this will continue to go, the temperature here will move about 10 times slower on this side than it does on this side over here. We're back. So now it's about 350. We stopped this at 335. And as you can see, the temperature here is at 79.5. So it's only gone up about 2.4 degrees since we started. We're at high on both of these, which means the temperature is over 257 degrees on the roof. And on this side, we're at 107, so 75, 85, 95, 105. So we've gone up over 30 degrees on this side. Again, we haven't even been going for just about a half an hour. If we let this go for an hour, this will still not get to 84 degrees. And what we'd really like you to do is uh, have us come out and give you a presentation and show you how we can make this work for you and see the full demonstration with our reps. Thank you for watching.